Well, as you can see, even way out here, there's old bits of metal and so on. Looks like part of an old tin wood stove. It was probably a cabin here hundred years ago or something. Not too much sign of it left, except for that. But it just shows you, you know, in, in a emergency or a survival situation, it doesn't seem to matter where you go. There are resources, and it doesn't look much like a resource at the moment, but when you're desperate, it's material, and it can be bent and twisted and made into something useful. When you have nothing, anything is better. Well, there's a bit of a sheltered area here. It's certainly thick enough in here. The, the wind is coming from the north, which is actually behind where we're looking. And the wind here mostly comes from the north and the west. So, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is, I'm probably 25, 30 yards at least from a trail that I travel fairly frequently in the winter time, probably at least twice a week. So I've come off that trail <clears throat> this short distance. And what I want to do here is just put a, uh, a stop point, a waypoint. Uh, it's a fairly long walk to travel this trail. This is more or less halfway, approximately. So really all I want to do is, uh, not really a shelter, just a bench, a, a place to sit and uh, put up enough of a windbreak just to make it comfortable when the snow's coming. We'll want to make it reasonably sturdy because, you know, we get quite a snow load here, as you can see. Uh, we've had our first dusting of snow for the year. It looks like it'll stay now. There's probably six or seven inches, so that would be, uh, what, two and a half centimeters to an inch. So there's probably 15 centimeters of snow, 12 to 15. But uh, when the snow really comes, it'll be chest deep. And it's not the snowfall, it's not the chest deep snow, it's the drifts. And the drifts can be, you know, 8 or 10 feet high and 100 feet across. And there's, there's just no going through that. Okay, there's a, there's a YouTube channel that I enjoy watching a lot. Uh, he's in the UK. He's a young fella, just like me. And uh, his name is also Paul, so you know it's got to be a good thing. And he's, uh, he's ex-military, so you know that the training he's had and the techniques he uses have to be pretty solid. And he enjoys doing a lot of older school things. Uh, carving notches and joints and, and various kinds of joinery that you would use around a camp for making a camp. And it's pretty solid stuff what he does. And uh, he and I have very similar ideas as to what's the right thing to do in a given situation. But we often have pretty different ways of doing it. Um, neither one of us is more right than the other one, just different. But. Uh, both techniques, his and mine, uh, are solid. They're, they're going to work. 
His name is Paul, as I said. His channel is Bushcraft Bites, B-Y-T-E-S. And uh, I think you should have a good look at what he's got going on there because, uh, you know, it's just another way to do something and interesting to do it. For me, I want to lash these poles together uh, to make the typical little framework that I'm going to use just to put a tarp over there or something just as a bit of a windbreak and the snow that you can see that accumulates on the branches I don't really want it falling on my head every time I sit here so I'm just going to put some sheets of plastic or something over this and a little bench it's not meant as a shelter by any means just a rest stop basically uh, you know like I said it's a hike through here that's that's a long walk in deep snow and it's uh, nice to have a spot maybe even if I'm tired I can stop and have a little boil up a tea or something but this little tool here is what I'm talking about. If you can see that too clearly, that's what I made. And this is my version of a wire clamp tying tool, or whatever you want to call it. And I have these coils of wire. This is just mechanics wire, nothing fancy. Um, this is just plain soft wire. I also have a roll uh, about a three kilo roll, so about seven pounds uh, of wire, it's 1200 feet long, of stainless steel. But as you can imagine, stainless steel will last a very long time out here. So if there's something that you want to use on an ongoing basis for a long term shelter, that would be one way to do it. It would certainly be strong, but uh, at least this will eventually return to nature if I'm not using it. Okay. I've just braced this up a little bit. Hopefully it'll do the job. So I've cut a length of wire that I think will be enough to double it and then go around my joint. And I'm gonna bend that pretty equally in half, as much as I can. You always need a bit more length than what, you're, what you really need. I'm just gonna wrap it around. I don't have a very good setup here, but there's not too much to work with in this cold. I'm gonna bring it around. This branch here is just uh, for support here for the moment. So I've got it around diagonally and I just pass it through. I got a lot more wire here than I need. However, we'll do it this way. So we're going to pass our wire around and we're going to come back around and we're going to go through the loop with both ends like that. And then we're going to just pull it up a little bit tight. Just you know, decently tight with, with our hands, as much as we can. Just saves more work with the tool. Now, keep these wires apart. This little tool has two holes drilled in it. Put that back in my pocket. So, one wire goes through each hole, one on each side. I'm trying to do this with cold fingers before my cold camera gives up power. But uh, we'll see if we can get at least one lash done before that happens. Okay, so here we go. We're pushing our way through. Push it right up. Now there's a little V in the end here, you can see. That hooks on the original hoop that we made. So we just slide up forward to that little hoop. Make it snug, as I said. Pull it kind of tight. We just start to turn it. And that starts to crimp that wire tight. And this is an awkward place to do this. I should have probably done this at home so you could get a better view, but I kind of try to do things as realistically as I can. We don't want to leave those laying around, so we'll tuck those pieces in my pocket there. You bend this over this way. I don't know if you can see that. What it's doing is taking that hoop and these wires, and it's folding the wires over the hoop like this. Oh, you see that? We'll bend that right down, like that. And once we've got that done, let me see if I can lift you up here a little bit and show you better. This is awkward with the tripod. Okay, so you can see what we've, I can't really see that. I'll show you in a minute. This is an awkward thing to do. So I wanna cut those tails off now. I'm done with that. It's a lot quicker when you're not trying to film it, is that uh, there's always a little tag in the wire that's a waste. Let me see if I can get you to see this better now. Let's get this against the snowy drop here. I'll get the viewfinder where I can see. Okay, so 
There's the hoop that we started with right there. And now the wires have pulled tight and they folded backwards over the hoop and you just tuck them down. You can nick them off shorter. I just tuck them down like that. There we go. And we got a very solid tie there. That wire is very strong. You can imagine the stainless steel one would be that much stronger. Um, I, I wouldn't suggest doing this where this pole attaches to the main tree. The reason is uh, the trees move and they'll flex and flex and the wire could fatigue and break, although it's probably not going to, especially the stainless steel. But what'll happen is as the tree grows, the wire's gonna cut into it and there's no give in there like there would be with cordage. And it's gonna cut in and cut in till it cuts right through the bark and right into the tree and it could nearly ring the tree. And obviously that's a bad thing for the tree. So we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna cause damage like that when it's not necessary. So this part here, I'm just gonna lean against the tree for today. And uh, we'll see, it's pretty cold out here, so my hands are starting to get chilly. Um, I'm going to put the other end on this and get it stacked up in place, and then I'll probably stick a few uprights on it. But I wanted to show you this little tool, because uh, I use this thing for everything. You know, if you've got a split handle uh, on an axe or something, let's see if we can get turned here. Yeah, if you've got a uh, an axe with a handle that splits lengthwise down there, a hammer, whatever the case may be, a couple of these bands clamped around there uh, is going to make a real good fix temporarily. I wouldn't trust it, you know, you don't want the hammer or the axe head to fly off afterwards, but uh, it'll certainly get you through the rest of the day for sure. Uh, I made that very strong, and as I was saying, the reason that I don't like things that a lot of people produce is because they produce it primarily for profit. So they find the fastest and quickest way to make it with the least expensive materials that they can get away with. And uh, I'm kind of picky about things like that, especially way out in the bush here. I can't just go and get another tool. Uh, I'm, I'm miles away from nothing. And if I'm really relying on these things, uh, that's a bad time to have a breakdown. So I'm, I'm kind of picky that way. I, I like things that work. Okay. I've got just the basic framework done up here. So I've tied it at this joint here with a, with a double tie. I've tied it at this joint twice around before I looped it. And the same, uh, this one on the end. Then a cross piece here. And it wasn't quite what well, was long enough. I put a second one there and tied that on. And then another good heavy tie right there on this one. It's not a lot of accomplishment for today, but it's getting darker. Here's my dogs. It's getting dark now. It was late in the day when I got here. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, head back home, because it's going to take me probably till dark to get out of here. And when I get home, maybe what I'll do is I'll use this little tool in the house, in my shop, uh, and I'll just wrap it around a piece of wood or something where there's better lighting and better visibility and, and I can get better angles and my hands thaw out and uh, give you a little bit better idea of how it works. Whew. Well, we're getting close now. That's good. Yeah, soft in my old age. I'll be tuned up after this winter. Spend a winter walking through this stuff on snowshoes and whatever. This is just a piece of wire. I've bent it equally in half. And then I just straightened it out a little bit. I'm just going to raise this up with that roll wire just to make life a little easier, I think. <clears throat> All right. So, we just put the wire and wrap it around. We'll just bend this a little bit. We just wrap the wire around. This ha axe handles often will split down through here, especially up at the top where they get bumped and banged a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this around like this. We're going to pass these two tails through the loop, <coughs> like that. 
just bought the tails through the loop just like that and then we're going to do this just going to tighten this up as best we can Now you could actually do this by hand. The only thing the tool does is give you a little bit more torque on it so that you can get it uh, <coughs> tidier. So what we do really is basically the, it's through the loop. Once we've got it as tight as we want, we're just bending the wires back like that tight to anchor it. And that's what locks it in place. The only thing the tool does, as I said, is to, to make this nice and tight. If we did that by hand, we'd never be able to get enough leverage on it to, to get it done. So try to do this and keep my fingers out of the way. I'm going to shorten that up just a bit to make this a little simpler to see and do so I don't look quite so clumsy. <coughs> so we take these, the tool with the two holes. The wire's nice. We put one wire through the outside hole on this side. Like that. And the other wire through the hole on the other side in the same exact way. There we go. Oh, here we go. Now, see, it's always clumsy when you're showing somebody. It's never like this when you're actually doing it. <laughs> All right. So, and the, the little V in the end here will go right in the tip of that loop that we've got. So it just hooks in there, and that just basically makes it so that we can get some leverage on here, and then you just tighten it and you tighten it. Now one of the things I did was you end up with a tail here quite a bit more uh, lost than, than you want really. Just keep tightening it. And I ended up cutting this short because I cut this this nose short. And I did that to move this pivot closer down to the tip so that I wouldn't have as much wasted wire on the tail. The problem is you lose your leverage. I had to cut this off as well because it would hit as it's about to now. And so it just makes it a little harder to do. I suppose I could just carry a ratchet and just, you know, ratchet it around. You don't want to ratchet it too much because, you know, this has got quite a bit of leverage on here. You can actually break this wire. <clears throat> and then you just fold it over like that. And as you can see, all we've done is, is just folded it over like we showed in the first part. Then you snip off the tail just between the, the machine, the, the tool and the piece. And as you can see, it's just folded that over. And then you just bend it. And you can cut it shorter and make it tidier if you want. Uh, and there it is. And that's that, that does not want to move much. And I'm putting a lot of a lot of stress on that. So that's just a simple way to do that. Okay, well, I'm finishing this off indoors. It was pretty late when I got back and uh, <clears throat> I was doing a lot of coughing because uh, when I was showing you the wiring on the, the axe handle down here inside, uh, I had spent a lot of time outside today and I guess it was just the, the drier air or something when I first came back in. So uh, sorry about that, but anyways, I want to uh, want to thank everybody for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, I hope that there's something that you're really getting some pleasure out of, some information out of, um, enjoyment. Just enjoy watching it. I want to thank each and every one uh, of the people who have subscribed and who watch these. It's very encouraging to, to give the person motivation to keep going. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, I really appreciate it if you would, and hit the little bell uh, so that it will remind you whenever there is a video that comes out. And if you think you know anybody who might enjoy these videos, if you shared them, that would be good too. And everybody have a safe week, and we'll see you all the next time. Thanks a lot.